Hello, welcome back to Civil Law Review. So this time, pag-uusapan natin is property. Kasi last time natapos na natin yung new civil code and family code. So property naman ngayon. And then after property, let's talk about succession. And then after succession, sa so January next year, we'll start talking about obligations and contracts. Or kaya bang December? Parang hindi kaya kasi... Aside sa civil law review, I still have to finish Cons T1 and Cons T2 for Poly Rev and uh, Crim 2, Book 2 for Crim Rev. So, ayun. Siguro until succession lang for civil law review for 2023 and then the other subjects of civil law that's discuss 2024. Okay, so property. Property includes all things which are or may be the object of appropriation. So, ano yung requisites? In order for an object to be considered as property, first, dapat may utility. That means it has the capacity to satisfy human wants. Second, there must be individuality or substantivity. That means it must have a separate or autonomous existence independent siya. And the last requisite is that it has the susceptibility of being appropriated. So, classifications of property. We have res communes. Sorry kung mali pronunciation ko. Res communes belonging to everyone. Res nullius belonging to no one. And third, res alicujos belonging to someone. A thing is not susceptible to appropriation when there is, first, there is physical impossibility. It's just impossible to appropriate. Second, there is legal impossibility. It's prohibited by law. So, bakit importante na i-classify kung anong uri ng property yung isang bagay? First is that if uh, related just a crime, then it's important in the determination of the offenses committed. Second, in the form of contracts. Third, for acquisitive prescription. Fourth, for actions for recovery of possession. Fifth, for determination of proper venue of action. Say, for example, um, merong mga pag ganitong property, for example, uh, kailangan sa lower level courts or sa MTC. Tapos, kapag ganitong property naman, kailangan sa RTC, things like that. Determination of governing law is also very important. For transactions involving real property, the same must be recorded in the registry of property to affect third persons. Preference of credit in insolvency proceedings for double sales. Kasi yung immovables, the first yung rule sa immovables is the first one to register in good faith the sale sa kanya of an immovable property shall be the owner. If walang registration, then the first in terms of having good 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 faith possession or possession in good faith shall be the owner and if there is no registration nor possession in good faith then the one with the oldest title in good faith yung owner ng property kapag immovable or real property kapag movable naman iba naman yung rule the first person who takes possession in good faith shall be the owner so merong differences that's why it's very important to know the classification of the property and distinguish. Also, it's very important for taxation kasi may real property tax, di ba? So, uh, dapat, alam mo na, personal property ba yan or real property ba yan? Kasi kapag real property yan, dapat kasama yan sa itatax, sa real property tax. So, ano ba yung real or immovable property? Isa lang yan. Real or immovable, you can interchange the use of the term. So, the following are immovable properties according to Article 415 of the Civil Code. First, land, buildings, roads, and constructions of all kinds adhered to the soil. So, it is an immovable by nature and incorporation. Article 415 enumerates lands and buildings separately. This means that the land itself or the building itself are considered immovables on their own. Hindi kailangang house and lot combo. So, yung land, immovable. Yung building, immovable. Yung road, immovable. 
constructions of all kinds adhere to the soil, still and immovable. So kahit isang paragraph lang sila, separate yan sila, each of them is a real property or an immovable. Structures which are merely superimposed on or not adhered to the soil, parang pinatong lang, can be considered as movable. Socioeconomic status is a factor. Even if the type of housing is made of light materials, if there is an intention to treat it as an immovable, then it is. So kahit light materials lang yan, pero yung purpose niyan is home nila, then it's an immovable. Road or structure, whether public or private, are immovables. Walls or fences are immovables as construction by incorporation. So next paragraph ng enumeration ng immov- immovables or real property sa Article 415 are trees, plants, and growing fruits. Pero dapat yung trees, plants, and growing f- fruits are attached to the land or form an integral part of an immovable. This is an immovable by nature and incorporation. So trees and plants are immovable by nature if they are spontaneous products of the soil and by incorporation if they are produced by lands or any kind through cultivation or labor. So tinanim. Pwedeng natural lang siya, like sa mga gubat, diba? tumutubo-tubo lang dyan, yung mga trees and plants. Or pwede namang sadyang tinanim. Regardless, immovable pa rin. Once trees or plants are cut or uproot, uprooted, however, they become movables. Kasi nga, immovable sila, kasi attached sila sa land. Pero pag tinanggal mo na sila, syempre, nagiging movables na sila. Timber may still be an immovable, however, even if it is uprooted, if it is not taken from the timber land, and it can still grow. Growing fruits may be considered personal property. So when they are sold or subject to transaction and they are gathered or harvested for delivery, they are no longer attached to the land and therefore they are treated as movables. Third paragraph. So, Article 415 ng enumeration ng real property. Everything that is attached to an immovable in a fixed manner in such a way that it cannot be separate, sep- separated therefrom without breaking the material or deterioration of the object. So, meron kang immovable, yung ibang mga nasa paragraph na to na enumerate natin, ito na enumerate na natin, for example, meron sa bahay, tapos naka-attach dyan in a fixed manner na hindi matatanggal unless masisira yung object or bababa yung quality. Papangit. So, immovable yan. So, it could be anything. It could be a movable on its own, pero naka-attach siya sa immovable. Naging immovable na rin siya. It's an immovable by nature and incorporation. The code does not require that the attachment or incorporation be made by the owner of the land. The only criterion is meron siyang union or incorporation with the immovable, such as for example, a soil or an immovable property. Next paragraph, statues, reliefs, paintings, or other objects for use or ornamentation placed in buildings or on lands by owner of the immovable so, dapat yung nag-place ng statues, reliefs, paintings, or other objects for use or ornamentation, meaning useful siya or pwedeng for decoration only, na nilagay sa building or sa land, you know, with an intention, with an intention to attach them permanently by the owner. Dapat yung owner yung maglagay. Okay? So, that is an immovable by destination. Okay? the intention to attach permanently to the tenements of the owner must be revealed, must be clear through outward action, of course. So, ano yung requisites? First, again, the objects must be placed to the immovable or in the immovable by the owner of the latter. Yung owner ng immovable siya din dapat yung maglalagay ng movable na i-attach niya dyan. So, ano yung mga bagay na pwede attach statues reliefs, paintings, or kahit anong object for use or ornamentation, inattach niya. And there is an intention to attach them permanently, even if 
separation will not involve breakage or injury. So sa previous paragraph, immovable siya kasi nakadikit siya sa immovable and kapag tinanggal po siya, masisira or bababa yung quality ng objects. Dito naman, hindi kailangang merong damage kapag dinetach. Pwedeng painting lang siya, merong hook, pinatong mo yung painting sa hook. Pag tinanggal mo yung painting sa hook, madadamage ba? Hindi naman, di ba? Walang nadadamage. Pero kasi yung painting na yan, for example, yung intention ng owner is jan lang siya ilagay, i-affix. Na kahit tanggalin mo siya, walang damage, immovable pa rin siya dahil sa intention na gawin siyang immovable na parang part part na siya ng immovable. Kaya kahit movable siya, nagiging part siya ng immovable. If object is placed by a person other than the owner, dapat para maging valid pa rin na immovable yung nilagay, dapat acting as the agent of the owner or my authority ni owner. Otherwise, the object will not attain the character of an immovable and magiging movable siya. The improvement or ornaments placed by the lessee, yung, for example, nagre-rent lang siya or nagli-lease ng space, tapos naglagay siya ng ornaments dyan. Dahil hindi yung owner naglagay or dahil hindi siya acting sa authority ni owner or hindi siya agent ni owner na ilagay dyan para maging permanent na nandyan lang siya, then, Uh, hindi siya hindi siya masasabing immovable movable pa rin yung nature niya next paragraph machinery receptacles instruments or implements intended by the owner of the tenement for an industry or works that may be carried on in a building or on a piece of land which tend directly to meet the needs of the said industry Or works. So, this is an immovable by destination. Yung immovable character depends upon the use in the industry or works carried on in a building or on a piece of land. So, yung requisites is first, the machinery is placed in the tenement by the owner or his agent of, or the agent of such tenement. tenement okay? So, dapat yung owner, yung may intention na gawin siyang immovable na i-place yung machinery dyan. Then, it is destined for use in the industry or work in the tenement and it tends to directly meet the needs of said industry or works. So, pag parang masyadong mabilis para sa inyo, ulitin nyo na lang or better yet, dapat i-memorize nyo yung Article 415 of the Civil Code. Next, animal houses, pigeon houses, beehives, fish ponds, or breeding places of similar nature in case their owner has placed them or preserves them with the intention to have them permanently attached to the land and forming permanent part of it, the animals in the places are included. So, this is an immovable by destination. So, again, yung requisites dito is nilagay ni owner or kahit tenant, basta yung tenant, agent ni owner or kahit sinong agent ni owner na may intention siya na i-attach permanently itong mga animal houses, pigeon houses, beehives, fish ponds or breeding places of similar nature para maging permanent part of the land. Pati yung mga animals inside kasama, immovable na din. Immovable by destination. Next, fertilizer actually used on a piece of land. Malamang, ba? Diba? Nagamit mo na yung fertilizer dun eh. Pero, if it's just a bag of fertilizer, then it's a movable. Pero pag ginamit mo na, binuhos mo na siya dun, syempre, nagiging part na siya na incorporate na siya. That's why it's an immovable by incorporation. Mines, quarries, and slag dumps, while the matter thereof forms part of the bed and waters, either running or stagnant, this is an immovable by nature, of course. So, minerals that are mined or severed, however, become movable. Siyempre, pag, for example, gold mine yan, tapos kinuha mo yung gold dyan, malamang, ibibenta mo yung gold, di ba? So, movable na yung gold. Pero abang andun sila, immovable sila. Waters, of course, are immovable, di ba? Whether it is running or stagnant. Next, docks and structures which 
kahit floating sila sa water, though floating, are intended by their nature and object to remain at a fixed place on a river, lake, or coast. So, intention na naman. This is an immovable by destination. Because vessels are considered movables, di ba? Pati, pati mga kotse, di ba? Kahit mahal yung kotse, ano pa rin yan? Movable pa rin yan. Personal property pa rin yan. Hindi pa rin yan immovable. So, as a general rule, basta vessels, yung mga ganyan, vehicles, movables. However, kapag ka, ano naman, kapag ka docks or structures, kahit nag-float lang sila, kahit ano, kahit vessel pa yan, for example, yate, for example, pero yung purpose ng yate is para, dyan lang siya, hindi siya aalis dyan, ginagawa siyang bahay, for example, then it's an immovable. Okay. And lastly, eto, hindi mo to nakikita, contracts, di ba? Siyempre, merong evidence yung contract ng document, of course. Pero, yung agreement, ba? Uh, yun yung essence, di ba? So, contracts for public works and servitudes. And other real rights. Okay? Real rights. Hindi intangible din tong real rights. Over immovable property is also real property. Because rights are also properties in a way. I mean, it's different, of course, if you're gonna be strict about it. But, rights... Diba? Sa succession, pwede ngang ipasa yan eh, as long as it is not personal in nature. So, basta rights over an immovable property, that's also considered as real property. It's actually called a real right. Contracts, same. Contracts for public works and servitude, same. Hindi lahat ng contracts ha, only contracts over immovables or public works and servitudes. An immovable by analogy. Contracts for public works, servitude, and other real rights are, again, immovable property. So, when may real property be treated as personal property? As a rule, parties to a contract may, by agreement, treat as personal property, which by nature would be real property, as long as no interest of third parties would be prejudiced thereby. So, ito yung exception sa general rule. Pwede naman agreehan. For example, yung machineries. Pwede siyang pasok dito sa real property. Pero, kunwari sa isang agreement na hindi naman affected yung third parties, walang mapiprejudice na ibang tao. Nag-agree yung parties na para sa machinery na to, movable to. Hindi to real property. Parang ganon. May usapan. So, move, naman ta- move on naman tayo sa personal or movable property. The following are movable properties or personal properties. According to Article 416 and 417 of the Civil Code. So, first, those movable susceptible of appropriation na hindi included sa enumeration kanina sa Article 415. Second, real property which by any special provision of the law is considered as personal property. Third, forces of nature which are brought under the control by science. Fourth, in general, all things which can be transported from place to place without impairment of the real property to which they are fixed. So, merong tests yan para malaman kung real or personal property. So, if the property can be transported or carried from place to place, then it's a personal property. If uh, the change of location can be made without injuring the immovable to which the object may be attached, then it's a personal property. And lastly, whether the object does not fall within any of the immovables enumerated in Article 415, or is not considered as an immovable by law, or, as mentioned earlier, by agreement of the parties. Next, obligations and actions which have for their object movables or demandable sums. So, counterpart to ng yung last paragraph dun sa Article 415 na contracts involving immovables or real rights. So, real property siya. Ito naman kapag ka, uh, obligations, actions, or rights, or contracts involving movables or demandable sums or pera. So, these are personal rights. They have a definite passive subject. 
For demandable sums, the amount are liquidated or determined. Next is shares of stock of agricultural, commercial, and industrial entities, although they may have real estate. So, kahit may real estate yan, basta shares of stock, it's personal property. Therefore, can be subject of chattel mortgage. So, are the certificates, certificates themselves evidencing the ownership of the shares. So, ayun. Lastly, other incorporeal personal property. So, then consumable goods, movables which cannot be used in an appropriate manner without being consumed, non-consumable goods, all those movables that are not classified as consumable, fungibles are those movable properties which belong to a common genus which indicates several species of the same kind, perfectly permitting substitution of one, generic siya, pwedeng kapag mawala to, okay lang pwedeng palitan. Non-fungible, non-fungibles are those movable properties specifically determined. That's why it cannot be substituted. Like for example, um, this particular watch. So yung watch na yan, yan lang yan, specific yan. Na watch ko, yung gusto mong bilhin, for example. So hindi ko pwedeng i-replace yan as the same model lang or something. Kasi specific siya na yan yung particular property na pinag-uusapan. Private ownership. Properties of private ownership beside patrimonial property of the state, provinces, cities, and municipalities consist of all property belonging to private persons, either individually or collectively. So, property owned by private persons personally or through predecessors and interest. Openly, continuously, and exclusively for 20 years, which is covered to private, which is covered to private property immediately preceding the filing of the application for confirmation of title, except when prevented by war or force majeure. Force majeure or force majeure. Churches are neither public nor private property, but a special kind devoted to religious worship, and as such, are outside of the commerce of man. So, na naman yung patrimonial property. This is property owned by the state and its political subdivisions in their private capacity. And all property of the state not included in its public dominion. Because as you know, the state can own properties as well. Public dominion consists of all lands of the public domain, waters, minerals, coal, petroleum, and other mineral oils, all forces of potential energy, fisheries, forests or timber, wildlife, flora and fauna, and other natural resources that are owned by the state with the exception of alienable agricultural, agricultural lands. So it is outside of the commerce of man as such it is not alienable or disposable and is not subject to registration under PD 1529 or the property registration decree. And it cannot, therefore, be the subject of a torrent certificate, certificate of title. A property of public dominion is neither susceptible to prescription. It cannot be leased, sold, or otherwise be an object of a contract. Such property cannot be subject to attachment and execution, nor can it be burned by any voluntary easements. Burdened. Oh my god, no notes of burned. Burdened. Wait lang, let me make corrections. Burdened. Burdened by any voluntary easements. For a property of public dominion that is no longer used for its original intended purpose, it can be reclassified as a patrimonial property of the state. Yung private, patrimonial property, private property ng state yan. Public dominion yun yung for all. So, reclassified as a patrimonial property of the state through a formal declaration by the executive or the president or possibly the legislative department by law that the subject property is no longer needed for public use or service and it is reclassified as patrimonial or private property of the state. Okay. So, kinds of public property, there are three kinds of property of public dominion. So, these are properties devoted to first public use or devoted to 
public service or devoted to development of national wealth. So the property of provinces, cities, and municipalities is divided into property for public use and patrimonial property only. Unlike in the classification of state properties, properties for public service and municipalities are not classified as public. Congress has absolute control over property held by LGUs in its public and governmental capacity. As for the properties of LGUs held by them in their private and proprietary capacity, they cannot be deprived thereof without due process and just compensation. So in just compensation na discuss na natin in sa poly revs, di ba? So, conver- conversion to private property of alienable public land held by a possessor or prescription. So, personally or through predecessors in interest, openly, continuously, and exclusively for 30 years is converted to private property by mere lapse or completion of the period. The application for confirmation is a mere formality because land had already been converted, giving rise to a registrable title. So, it's not registered, but capable of being registered. Conversion to public dominion of private property, abandonment, and reclamation. So, through the gradual encroachment or erosion by the ebb and flow of the tide, private property may become public if the owner appears to have abandoned the land and permitted it to be totally eaten up by the sea as to become part of the shore. The land having disappeared on account of the gradual erosion in case of natural expropriation and having remained submerged until they are reclaimed by government or public land. Okay, so now let's talk about hidden treasures. So hidden treasures, any hidden and unknown deposit of a money, jewelry, or other previous objects, the ownership of such such objects are unknown. Siyempre, pag may ari yan, pag nahanap mo yan, hindi yan, ano, hindi yan magiging sayo. Uh, kasi merong known owner eh. Pero ito, nag apply lang yung rule na to kapag ka walang may ari or hindi kilala kung sino yung may ari. So, as a general rule, hidden treasure belongs to the owner of the land, building, or other property on which it is found. Save for the following exceptions, wherein the finder of such hidden treasure is entitled to one half of such treasure. So, that is if the finding is by chance, or the finding is not co-owner of the property where it is found, the finder is not a trespasser, dapat. Finder is not agency of the landowner. And finder is not the owner of the land, building, or other property. If the things found may be of interest to science, history, or the arts, the state has a right to acquire them, pero not for free. Dapat bayaran ng state at their just price. Which shall be divided in conformity with you know, the one half dun sa finder and one half sa owner of the land if na satisfy yung mga conditions. So, for purposes of hidden treasure, a usufructory is considered a stranger to property. Kasi hindi naman siya yung may-ari eh. Kapag usufruct lang kasi, di ba, merong naked owner. So, yung naked owner, yun yung makakakuha ng owner's share dun sa one half, one half. Okay, so, yun yung for property... Then, for the next video, I discuss ko ba ito ngayon? Or next video na yung ownership. Actually, next video na yung ownership. Kasi medyo madami din yung ownership eh. So, itutuloy ko na lang siguro. Pero sa next video. Okay.